welcome to Faith on Film, a program whose purpose is to keep you aware and informed on everything that's happening in the world of Faith and Family Films. Now, I'm so excited about today's program, and if you're actually watching it right now, then this is a miracle because we've had such a hard time getting this program together, and I'll share with you a little bit more about that, but first let me introduce to you my guest. DJ Perry is an international artist mostly known for his work in the motion picture realm. This Michigan-born actor, producer, and writer has built an impressive career in the entertainment industry. As CEO of Collective Development Incorporated and as an independent producer, he supervised and or participated in the overall productions of dozens of feature films in all our genres and formats. As an actor, he's become one of the most sought out independent leading men, sharing the screen with many legends of the entertainment industry. And he does this with a humble, appreciative attitude that makes him a draw in front of and behind the camera. DJ, <laughs> welcome to wow. Faith on Film. Thank you for having me. What an introduction there. Oh, I'm telling you, and I'm expecting great things because I'm, I'm going to let the audience in on a little behind the scenes stuff here. We have actually recorded a show. I've done an interview with you twice already. And for some reason, the, the attack on it, I, I think, has been amazing. Um, the first time, the feed was really bad. It was very choppy and it just wasn't working out. So I said, we got to do this again. So we do the show again. And then when I go back to grab the files, it's not there. It doesn't exist, like, like if we never did it. But I know we did it because I had seen it before. Suddenly it was gone. So I don't know what that's about. But again, if you're seeing the show today, we have had victory. <sighs> DJ, right, right. Yeah, DJ, let's start off by learning a little bit about you and who you are, how you got started. You know, did you follow the typical... Uh, uh, road that a lot of us have followed that since we were little kids, we were out there with our dad's little film camera or something. How did you get started in this? Well, you know, I think you're exactly right. It started as a, a child that just loved to make believe and often was the one that was organizing all the kids around the neighborhood mm -hmm. to partake in whatever. And, uh, you know, later, yes, when Pa Perry did get the old VHS camcorder, uh, we requested that we could take it out to do some serious work with. Mm -hmm. And of course that was a, an expensive piece of equipment at the time. And it was strictly for recording family memories. So I, I have thanked my father publicly many times because if he would said, absolutely not, that's not a toy, this whole path, this medium might not have opened up to me. So, yeah. Thank you, Pop. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I really have a feeling that for those of us that are involved specifically in the faith, uh, faith genre, and even though your movies are what, I know you call them light faith, but when I've seen the movies, to me, they, they got a pretty strong mess, biblical message. Now, is there an altar call and all that? Of course not. But they really do carry a good, strong biblical message. But I have a feeling that God, from, uh, from conception, I would think, has already chosen our paths, has chosen our careers, and that's why we start very young. And sometimes even though we deviate a little bit from it, perhaps, but eventually we come right back. I've spoken to so many uh, you know, of my guests and the, the stories are actually quite similar. Uh, now, why did you decide to, uh, to, to go into the, the faith and family genre? Well, you know what? I actually uh, credit the, in, we're all influenced by material. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I grew up watching The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams, The Waltons, Little House on the Prairie, yeah. a time where, you know, writers went out of their way to entertain an audience and then educate them with a little message. And I think we kind of got away from that and things were more sensationalized and scandalous and everything else. And when I first started, you know, putting out my own writing and shopping it around, and this was 20 years ago, people loved the writing, but they said, it's very old fashioned. It's very old fashioned. That was something I used to hear a lot. And uh, now it's funny how it's almost come back around. Mm -hmm. I really haven't. I mean, as a writer, I think I've continued to refine, but I haven't really changed. And mm -hmm. the other thing is when we take a snapshot of society, in our films, in our worlds we create, the whole spectrum of people are represented there. And it's the lessons that you learn between, you know, maybe the person that has a stronger spiritual foothold 
their life is going a little easier. They're not going against the grain. Mm-hmm. You know, they're trying to find they're trying to follow some basic rules that, uh, you know, result in their lives being blessed. And then there's, you know, someone in the story who maybe they make unwise choices and their path is a little rougher and there's something to be learned. I, I think that the the faith is in the writing of the characters because mm-hmm. we all have a certain degree of faith and our faith is challenged by everything that happens around us. So, I mean, we were making movies with a message way, way before there was a genre known as mm-hmm. the faith filmmaking. I mean, the only faith filmmaking for us was, I think there was the Bible man stuff that Willie Ames was doing right. or something like that. And, uh, you know, so it's either a movie was just kind of mindless and really didn't have any depth to it or a good solid story has messages woven in it. Right. So. And, you know, I think that's the problem now is that in, in, the, in the Hollywood movies, um, there doesn't seem to be any message of morality. In fact, it's like they've thrown away um, all morality and all they're doing is throwing out content that... Um, you know, it's very salacious. I mean, I, I think about this new movie that uh, Netflix just put out uh, that's all about, you know, chil- basically a children's sexuality. And, uh, and it's not just that one. I see a lot of this happening. And so more and more, I think we need movies like what you're talking about. Well, it's supply and demand. Mm-hmm. You know, those corporations are smart. And if there wasn't a demand for a certain kind of content, they wouldn't be trying to provide it. Doesn't Ooh. make it right. But oh, I'm oh, saying oh. that there's consumers out there and you know it's that's where you got to safeguard that, you know what what kind of story do you want to tell you know the best thing i think people can do for something like that is not watch it whether it was even you know that's a whole debate about uh you know again you you've seen my films i think children should be children and have that childhood and the innocence and not uh, be rushed into the ugliness of the world that they're all going to get to eventually, you know, like the rest of us that you have to deal with that. But, um, yeah, there's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit pushing the edge. I haven't seen any of it to be honest. So, you know what, but you just said something that I just found really disconcerting here. And that's that you said supply and demand which suggests that the people are wanting that kind of content. And uh, that's actually even worse than the people creating it. But I'll tell you what, let's take a quick break right now. We'll come back. Thank you, I'm Let's come back and talk about that a little bit and then talk about your movies uh, and how different they are, okay? So folks, don't go away. We're gonna be right back. Encourage TV. Family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. really big. What's really big? Those aren't silly. Oh, I know. It's bigger than the size of our house. It's a little bigger than that. Like the size of two houses. <gasps> no two houses in a spaceship. I bet it's even bigger than the castle. Don't be ridiculous. That's impossible. Only one university in the nation was chosen to demonstrate at the World Equestrian Games. And it's the only Christian university in the South offering an equine management major. Only one university produced the video leading into coverage for the games. And it's the only university with students hired as part of a broadcast crew for nine Olympic Games. 
one university, equipping students for a lifetime of leadership and service. Asbury University. Start here. Impact the world. Welcome back to Faith on Film. We're here with my friend DJ Perry. And again, if you're seeing this program, a miracle has just happened because we've tried this twice and here we are. He says that we were just rehearsing. So uh, nonetheless, DJ, you said something in that, first, in that first segment that I think it just really impacted me right now. And that is the fact that Hollywood is creating this salacious content, this um, you know, non-moral or, or, or immoral content because the people want it. And when, when you say the people, I'm assuming you're including Christian people because the, you know, we're a pretty large part of the, the world's population or it's certainly the USA population. <sighs> what do we do about this? Well, you know, I, I like to say that focus on what you can control. And mm -hmm. what I can control is telling, I wanna say a different story. I wanna say a new story, but it's not. They're all mm -hmm. old stories. They're parables that have a lesson woven within them. And like I said, that I couldn't get screenplays sold back in the day, I think because they were positive content. They had that message built into it. And that's why it made it a harder sell where a shoot 'em up or something that was more of a sexy thriller might have gotten made. But see, I feel better now that, you know, even the things that were rejected, that were painful before, the fact that they weren't compromised and the stories weren't twisted and gutted of everything good about it. These these films that we're making at CDI are, are coming out very uncensored. You know, Bridgestone, they, they love the content that we do. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are repping most of our uh, content at this time and um, doing a wonderful job with that. But it's also that creative freedom. But we are also, we take that responsibility of that creative freedom very strongly. But anyhow you cut it, the stuff that we're making, I think, leaves people thinking. And I kind of believe when you sit down to watch it, if after watching it, you're, you've changed, you've, you've gone off in a different direction, just like in our conversation, if it makes you question something that maybe you didn't quite see before, you know, films are missing that. And rather than just criticize what others are doing, I think you can lead by example by making great film that has powerful messages and you will attract your own audience, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, and I've always, yeah, go ahead. Just provide an option to people. Well, you know, I've always felt like um, to combat darkness, let's, let's call this darkness, you don't remove darkness, you infuse it with light. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In other words, we can't just say, let's get rid of that, but rather we have to bring in something and re replace it, if you will, and, and, and give that choice and bring in the light, which is what then will end the darkness. I don't know, maybe that's too deep in my head here, but um, what are some of the light bearing uh, films that you're, that you're making? You know, we did a biblical trilogy mm -hmm. and we're getting ready to come upon the new holiday season. So we're excited about that. It's the Quest trilogy mm -hmm. and we're really pushing it as the three movie series that it is. It's okay. 40 Nights, Chasing the Star and the Christ Slayer. And we were talking this morning. One of the things that makes it unique is throughout this trilogy, the common thread tie tends to be what is going on with the angels, with the devil, with the kingdom. You know, the actions of of Jesus coming to earth and everything he put himself through, we often see it from man's point of view, but we don't see kind of what's going on from the other side, the proposed, what kind of effect would this have, could this have mm -hmm. on people? And so they're getting ready for a new holiday season. We've had a lot of uh, different networks, other countries that are expanding and showing it. But I think it's important that they know that they're three films, because if right. you watch the middle one out of context a little bit, they can stand up on their own, but it makes more sense. There's a greater story when you watch them all together. Okay. So that's coming up for the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And then our Wild Faith, which I know is a favorite of yours. Yes, loved it. Wild Faith is a 1800s tale that takes place in Michigan. And it uh, it's won numerous awards for us, which I don't put a lot of stock in the awards, but 
you know, the we we got a few for like outstanding mm-hmm. issues of racial justice and yeah. stuff like that. I was pretty proud of, you know, it's um, it's been a good film for us. And literally millions of people have been tuning in to see this wild faith. And if uh, if you haven't seen Wild Faith, you should take a watch. And it it looks very plausible that a TV series spinoff could be coming from that. that. I agree. It's a must watch. <clears throat> How can people watch it? Where where would they go to see it? Well, our Encourage TV is one of many places okay. that, you know, doing the free programming based off advertisers now. But really, all platforms are carrying at this time. You know, Amazon okay. Prime, Google Play. You know, I know that uh, um, even Pure Flix is running mm-hmm. some of them. Your network is running mm-hmm. them, aren't they? Parables? I'm not time. sure we've been able to work out that deal yet, but I am working on it because I definitely yeah. want it. Yes. Well, you know, it's the the films continue to roll out Good. with all that. But I know with the Amazon Prime and then Pluto TV and mm-hmm. Tubi and and oh my goodness, there's so many of them these days. The way it's going, Man's Best Friend is the other one that I've, uh, I've came that out. One. I've seen that one, and and that does uh, have a special place in my heart also because of the military aspect. My son was a Army Ranger, so I have a special yeah. heart for that. Well, and, you know, that film, it, it asks a lot of questions of people and doesn't mm-hmm. really force any answers on you. It just yeah. leaves you to kind of think and ponder the difference between what's lawful and what's right. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of uh, interesting aspects to that film, which is for people that don't know right. about, uh, you know, service dogs, adoption dogs, mm-hmm. our military men and women mm-hmm. and um, and about that great pride that they carry. So. Yeah. Man's best friend. And we'll wait and talk about Lost Heart. I think that's the the big one getting ready to come out now. Well, I'll tell you what then. Let's take another quick break right now and come back and we'll talk about that and maybe any future projects that you already got on your mind. So folks, again, don't go away. We're going to be right back. You know... I never realized how much work goes into taking care of horses. You think that's hard? Try taking care of thousands of animals at the same time. Go ahead. Think bigger. Just one. Have you ever considered being an actor or director of a major feature film? But what if God is calling you to do just that? Let this be your pulpit. And you learn filmmaking on two backlots, a first century backlot and a small town backlot under the watchful eyes of Christian professional filmmakers like Dr. Mark Kuchin. So what are you waiting for? 469-655-3222. Transformation Film Institute, a place where passion meets purpose. I wonder if penguins have knees. I wonder how many colors we can't see. I wonder why there's so many stars in the universe. I wonder if we ever looked like apes. You want to find out? I wonder if puppies have belly buttons. Welcome back to Babe on Film. We are here with DJ Perry, uh, <clears throat> who just does some amazing films. One of my favorite, of course, is Wild Faith that we talked about. But you've got something new coming out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have Lost Heart. Lost, Lost Heart. Lost Heart is coming out, and it stars Melissa Ann Schutz. If people might know her as Mother Mary in the biblical trilogy, mm-hmm. and she starred in Ashes of Eden. And then Victoria Jackson from oh. Saturday Night Live and Don Most from Happy Days. 
Um, just amazing acting throughout this. Uh, Josh Perry, who was in The Christ Slayer, he played yeah. Elvis, the, the actor with Down syndrome. He mm -hmm. is the show stealer in the thing. Uh, some great music. One of the actresses, Taylor, who's our young lead, her mm -hmm. band Roanoke. Roanoke, let me get that right, not <laughs> Slaughter, <laughs> is on the soundtrack along with the Cash Collective, which is John Carter Cash and mm -hmm. his wife, Anna. And so this movie, it is about uh, UFOs, Bigfoot, and Jesus. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, that's, that's one thing about you is, is you don't do your typical christianese films you know about this little family in the house with the picket fence and everything is peachy king or something is going wrong then they pray and it's all taken care of you do some really interesting films well this one's a little <laughs> bit about you know it's funny how there's this separation between divinity and science and the ocean of unknown between it you know and I don't think it always has to be that way and the movie is about embracing a little bit of we always want to know everything so badly, sure. you yeah. know, sometimes we're just not meant to know. That's, and, that's uh, true. It, faith is hard because a lot of times you have to see it to believe it. And this movie is about forgiveness and family and love. And it's got all those trademark things. We deal with serious issues, but we offset it with a good bit of humor. And that's kind of becoming a staple at CDI a little bit. And we've got the whole cdi troop involved humor so H humor yeah. is becoming a thing for cdi now you know it it has been for a while if you look at wild faith you know there's there's always that kind of edge of humor a little bit here and there yeah i guess, I guess a little bit. dealing with when dealing with serious topics you can kind of push an audience right up to a point and then it's mm -hmm. nice to offset it and give them a break sure. we don't have to do a conclusion Let's break the tension and get back to, you know, yep. and and we, we do that quite often if you look back at the movies. They're very intense drama, but sometimes right at that breaking point, you know, Elvis in the Christ Slayer shows up talking about how good the bread smells. It's <laughs> heavenly, you know. So it's, it's sometimes about taking audiences to an almost uncomfortable place and then hmm. letting them letting them off the hook to just think out. Where are so, you in the process of this movie? Are, are you already, is it produced ready, already? It's, it's produced, it's finished, it's at the distributor. We have national PR that's underway. Let me get this right, including Don and Victoria and Melissa are going on the Huckabee show. Nice. And it will be, let's see, playing on November 14th and 15th, okay? And what we have is if you sign up for Encourage TV, we're doing two one night only events one play one is on november 7th and one is on the 21st you sign up on encourage tv you don't need a credit card just an email let them know you're not a robot you get access to their different platforms and we're doing we're going to show the film on the 7th for a worldwide audience one showing on the 7th and one on the 21st but the beautiful part is we are going to film as an event our premiere hmm. pre-party with our cast and crew mm -hmm. and so we're going to actually encourage tv is going to play that before and after the movie so it's almost like you're right there at the oh, red nice. carpet event yes then you watch the film and then you get to see the wrap-up so you'll get to see the pre-interviews and the afterthoughts and you get to watch the movie as well wow. so that is fantastic. Trying some different things in these times. It's a, I, it's I know. Different. You got to get creative. <laughs> yeah. So if people want to follow you and just keep up to date on, on what you're doing, make sure they know when these dates are and everything, how do they get a hold of you or how do they follow you? Well, you know, djperryblog.com okay. is probably one of the easiest places to get the early information because... Uh -huh. I started doing a blog uh, maybe 10 years ago, every Sunday. I've wow. missed very few. And it's kind of like about that journey of an artist and that line between monetizing and mm -hmm. keeping your integrity and uh, just the trials and tribulations. And right. now it's also become a little bit of the updates on certain things. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Every Sunday, coffee. Come and join us. Fantastic. Well, you know, folks... You've got it there. Just follow him. 
become a part of his little group there or big group. I imagine by now it's a pretty yeah, big group. I've always development incorporated. Yeah, it's cdiproductions.com. Stop okay. by there. It's a lot of stuff continuously posted up there. Fantastic. Well, I'm so glad that we were finally able to really get this show yeah. done. And again, if you're watching it, the miracle happens. <laughs> I'm the, pretty excited. And, and you were here with us. And I, right. That's right, yes. Well, DJ, thank you for taking the time again uh, to yeah, be with us. You. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure I'll have you back on because there's going to be some updates that probably should happen on all this. Oh, absolutely. Thank Folks, you so much. You bet. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Encourage TV. Family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to today's show. I'm glad we were finally able to make it happen. I just want to remind you to check out Parables TV, of course, a place where you can watch some wonderful Christian movies, documentaries, reality shows, just a lot of great content for you and your family. Simply go to parables.tv. That's parables.tv. And it's, of course, free. All you have to do is register. And don't forget to write me at uh, faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Well, I've run out of time, so until next week, take care.